Hello everyone. I want to send you out some encouragement this morning. Uh, I know that it's really hard to learn, especially rational expressions, all at home, all by yourself. Uh, and so um, I'm hoping that, um, that you're trugging on and just doing your best. If you're watching videos, going on XYZ textbooks, remember that all of their videos are free. And practicing your factoring is, I mean, that's what makes these hard, is if your factoring is weak. And so um, that's what you want to make sure. Uh, how you add or subtract um, fractions is you have to have a common denominator. How you find the common, so if they already have a common denominator, hot diggity dog. Uh, and so if they already have a common denominator, I'm going to ignore this for a second. Then what you do is you add or subtract uh, your numerators over that common denominator. And you have to be careful when you're subtracting because you have to distribute, then combine like terms. Then you simplify, and we learn how to simplify in 7.1. You factor the numerator and also the denominator and reduce pieces that are exactly the same. They reduce to one. I'm going to come back on what if they didn't have a common denominator um, because all of these first problems do have a common denominator. Um, oh, this one doesn't have a common denominator. Um, I'm going to skip eight, and I'm going to go over here where they do have a common denominator. And, um, and so what you do to uh, once they have a common denominator, so number 16 here, they both have the same denominator. So what you do is you add the numerators, because it says add, over the common denominator, x plus y over x squared minus y squared. Um, and then we're not done because we would be done if it was simplified, but we have to simplify. And how you simplify is by factoring the numerator, but x plus y doesn't factor. So I like to put parentheses around it just to show myself that I thought about it. I said to myself, you need to factor that, but it doesn't, so I put parentheses around it. Now I'm saying to myself, hey, you need to factor that. And I notice, oh yeah, that's a difference of squares and I'm going to put my answer right under here. So remember how you factor the difference of squares. What makes x squared? x times x. What makes y squared? y times y. And you have to have 1 plus and 1 minus. And then now you can reduce out things that are exactly the same, exactly the same size and exactly the same. So this is a binomial and that's a binomial that's exactly the same as it. So when they reduce, uh, x plus y divided by x plus y is 1. And, um, and so what this would give, and, and sometimes people don't know what to do with that, this would give x minus y in the denominator, right, with or without the parentheses. And they're not sure what should be in the numerator. And what should be in the numerator is a 1, a placeholder 1. When you divided this, you got 1. And it is required that you would write a 1 in the numerator. On the other hand, um, same denominator here, um, and when I add these together, y, x plus y, 4, 4y, over x squared minus y squared. This does not factor, but after I add them together, I'd ask myself about it. So y, x plus 4y, I can't say that this morning. I, maybe it's too early. Um, maybe that's because I've had too much hot tea. Maybe it's because this is my third video. Um, and so uh, this is um, factors. It's a difference of squares. We just factored it over there. But this doesn't reduce because even though they're binomial and a binomial, they're not exactly the same. Um, and so they have to be exactly the same. So this is just the answer there. So the book has problems that reduce and ones that don't reduce. You just have to look and see. Is it going to reduce or is it not going to reduce? So this problem 18 is a subtraction and um, and so with a subtraction you have to be a little bit more careful and, um, and so uh, x plus 2 is the common denominator so it has that. Really there's parentheses here and parentheses here if you will. And, um, and so when you go to do that subtraction, 2x minus 4 with those parentheses that are there uh, implied, you really need to distribute 
that negative there. So this becomes 2x minus 4 minus x, so minus x, plus 6, all divided by x plus 2. And then when I combine like terms, 2x minus x is x, minus 4 plus 6 is positive 2. So this is actually x plus 2 over x plus 2. So I would need to factor, I know that they're the same, but I want to make a point here, and I need to factor in order to reduce, but it doesn't factor, and it doesn't factor, right? And they do are they are the same. When I put the parentheses around the whole numerator and the whole denominator, they're exactly the same. I got my email up, and um, it's just clicking in all of the uh, teachers and uh, students, uh, just email after email after email about uh, what's going to happen, what's going to happen. And so, yeah, we're in uncertain times. Um, Maybe they'll change our name to the greatest generation, right? So here we're going to have 1 when we divide that. This divided by that is 1. Okay, so um, my mom um, will probably send me a comment on that, on that comment. She'll say, uh, um, my mom is part of the greatest generation, and she'll say, nope, nope, nope. Okay, so... Uh, Parentheses again because it subtracts, so I have to really be careful. The denominators are the same, so I'm like hot diggity dog. And uh, this is what my little thoughts are thinking, uh, that I have to subtract that, so I'm going to distribute that negative. So when I do, that's going to be 2x minus 3, nothing to do there, minus x plus 1. So this is what I am thinking, right? And, um, and then this is what I get when I distribute that over x minus 2. I think this number 17 was your problem, right? And um, I think that when I had this in class, I think I let everyone give a try to it and walked around and saw how they did. And so hopefully um, you pause the video, pause, and do it. And then we get that same thing, x minus 2 over x minus 2 equals 1 as our answer. Okay, so all of these examples that I just did for you have a common denominator. What if their denominators are not the same? And so a sneak peek on their denominator not being the same uh, is uh, right here, right? I'm gonna put this over the top of that for right now. I don't know if that looks hokey, but anyway. So, um, and so what if their denominators are not the same? Then what do you do? Well, this one you could actually do with your calculator so we can compare it, but they're actually having us practice with numbers so that we can see what how we would do it when it gets more difficult and is uh, looking like this, right? So that's what we're on about, is what if it looks like this or this or that? Well, we're gonna use this smaller example to see how you would do it, and it's the same way, uh, only you um, so um, only you have to follow the um, binomial, trinomial. So this is a monomial. These are monomials, uh, 28 and 42. And so, but you could still do it uh, using the um, the method um, that we're gonna that we're gonna do today, which is factor the denominators. That's how you can find the common denominator. So 28, since it's a mono monomial, you prime factor it. So that's 2 times 14, which is 2 times 7. And for now, I'm going to write this as 6 over 2 times 2 times 7 minus. And then 42 is 2 times 21, which is 3 times 7. And that's over 5, 5 in the numerator. Now, I didn't realize this about this problem right now, but I, I do see it now that I've written that out, is that this fraction actually would reduce. 6 is 2 times 3. And um, that would be helpful because the denominator, so if you could reduce something, usually you can't reduce something. Usually you have to build up. And so, um, and um, 
I didn't remember that about this problem. So I'll do it both ways so that you could see. Usually you can't reduce, and so um, I'm going to go with that I can't reduce. So what this one has is two twos. So when I'm thinking about the lowest common denominator, going without reducing, it needs to have two twos because this one has two twos. So I'm going to build that lowest common denominator. This one only had one two. This one has a three and that one doesn't have a three. So the lowest common denominator has to have a three. It has to have every factor of both fractions. And then they both already have a 7. They both already have the same amount of 7. They're not different by 7. So just a 7 here. So that's the lowest common denominator. And what this fraction is missing is the 3. So to make an equivalent fraction, you'd have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3. So by 3. And to make an equivalent fraction here, um, to make all the same pieces, you're missing one of the twos. And so this would give us 18 over that common denominator. I'm just going to write it uh, not in factored form because that's what we would do. I know that it's a number. What is the number? I don't even know, but it doesn't matter. Over 10 um, with 10 and then that common denominator. Because with polynomials, you would want to leave it factored. And then you do the, the subtraction up there. 18 take away 10 is 8. And now I could reduce by factoring the numerator, which is 2 times 2 times 2 over 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. And a 2 drops out away, divides out, makes 1. Another 2 drops away, divides out, makes 1. And what we're left with is 2 over 21. And if we reduced it from the first step there, we would have gotten the same answer. I want to show you. Uh, if you have something that reduces, so we had 6 over, it would be okay to reduce it uh, as long as it didn't create What did I have? I put the 3 there, so I didn't need the 3 here. So this is what I started with, and a 5, a 3, and a 7. Okay, so I could have noticed here that 6 is 2 times 3, and divided out this 2. And, uh, and so this would have been 3 over 2 times 7, minus 5 over 2 times 3 times 7, and the lowest common denominator now, it's got to have a 2. They both have a 2. It's got to have a 3 because this one has a 3. And it's got to have a 7 because they both have a 7. So I'm going to multiply it here, top and bottom, by 3. So this gives us 9 over this common denominator thing that we're creating. I'm going to put it in order over and then our common denominator and then when we do our subtraction we get 4 over our common denominator and remember 4 is 2 times 2 and the 2's drop out so we get 2 over 21 and of course this were just numbers and so um, we could have just put it in our calculator uh, we could have done a lot less work with numbers, we know shortcuts with when you have monomials, when you just have numbers. Uh, but what you need when you, what you need to do when you have polynomials is this process. And so that's the reason they went back and they reviewed the process. It's actually the, the process that they showed you the very first time that you subtracted fractions. Of course, they didn't the very first time you subtracted fractions give you uh, bad numbers like that. Uh, they gave you things like uh, 2 and 3 as your denominators. And then, so the strategy is to first to, to make sure that you have a common denominator. And if you don't have a common denominator, to build it. And we're going to practice that. And then I missed, right in here, it, it got left out. I don't know where it went. It used to be here. I know that it did in the notes. But right here, I used to have a step. And that step was make equivalent. So I'm going to put it up here. Um, make 
equivalent fractions with the LCD. And I don't know where that step went, but we'll call that the third thing in the making sure that you have a common denominator. You know, there was the look at it, build the common denominator. Now you gotta make equivalent fractions. You gotta make two, you gotta make your fractions all have the lowest common denominator as their denominator. Then you move on to adding and subtracting the numerator over the common denominator making sure to be careful when you subtract, you have to distribute your negative, and then you simplify, and how you simplify is by factoring the numerator and the denominator and reducing the pieces that are exactly the same. So now we're gonna go try some that don't have the common denominator. So we already did these with the common denominator, and we have four more examples to do, and, um, and then we'll be done. So uh, this is 20. And we can see that the denominators are not the same. We have uh, a, a squared, and a cubed. So when I'm thinking about those denominators, and this is in my, my thoughts, right? This is what I'm thinking. This is three over a plus two over a times a. That's what a squared is, minus one over a times a times a, that's what a cube is. And, um, and so when I'm thinking about the common denominator, the lowest common denominator, this one says it has to have one a. This one says two a's. This one says three. So this is the most, this is the one that's the most demanding. So it needs to have a times a times a, which is a to the third, of course. And so what is this one missing? Well, that one right there is missing two a's. So to make an equivalent fraction, you have to multiply the top by a times a and the bottom by a times a. And, um, and so what that's gonna give is three a squared in the numerator. And the denominator, you can choose to write that as a cubed or you could write it as a times a times a for now, either one. It's a monomial. I'll definitely want to leave it factored when it is a um, when it's a binomial and a trinomial, and so and then this one's missing an a, right in the bottom. I want three a's, so times an a, top and bottom. So this is plus two a over a a a, right? Three a's minus one over a a a, three a's, and now all I have to do is uh, combine add and subtract. So uh, that, uh, that pin's not the, not the brightest. Um, I'll put it in the use it for something different category. So this is 3a squared plus 2a uh, minus 1 over a, 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 right? And this is not going to reduce because even if this numerator factored, it doesn't have a greatest common factor, and that's the only thing that could reduce with the denominator is a monomial A, if you had a monomial A, which I don't have in the numerator. So if I factored this, it would be a binomial times a binomial and would not reduce with a monomial. So there's no reason for me to get all uh, excited and get it factored. So this would just be over A cubed. I'll write it a little nicer, and then there we would be done and it won't reduce because it matters on uh, when you're reducing, it has to be exactly the same. And this is a trinomial, and even if I factored it, it would be a binomial times a binomial, and that's a monomial, and they have to be exactly the same. Got paint on my fingers because I did paint night last night with my son here at our house. On the, um, on the YouTube, there's this great person called the Art Sherpa. If you're needing some stress relief and you have some paints at your house, um, just go for it. We didn't have any of the right colors or any of the right brushes, um, and, uh, but, uh, but we painted away. Okay, so these denominators are not the same. A plus B is not the same as A cubed plus B cubed. So what you have to do is you have to factor them like we did here to, to get them to be the same. So one over A plus B, that doesn't factor plus, 
But I hope that you're recognizing that when I say that I need to factor that, that hey, hey, that's one of my friends, right? That is the cube. And there's actually a formula for the cube. And actually this is, right? Just if you uh, formula a person, this is the, this is, they write it with A's and B's just like that. So this is really just the formula. So I'm writing out the formula, and then normally I would say, I've written out the formula, now replace in. But there's the formula, and it was exactly what they had. This will not factor further, because it's a binomial without a greatest common factor, or a difference of squares or a cubed. And the trinomial, when you use the cubed formula, it won't factor further. So this is 3AB over A plus B a squared minus a b plus b squared. So what, what the lowest common denominator is, they both have in common a binomial a plus b. So that's part of the least common denominator, uh, a plus b, what they have in common. But this one has something extra. It has that trinomial. And so it needs to be part of the lowest common denominator as well. And so this one already is the lowest common denominator, but this one is missing the trinomial. So we're gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator by the missing piece, which is the trinomial right there. We'll see if this pin works. So times a squared plus, a, oh, it's minus, and I, my husband put this lovely correction tape for my boo-boos. So minus AB plus B squared in the top. Uh, ooh, it barely fit, right? And in the bottom as well. A squared minus AB plus B squared in the bottom as well. And um, uh, I hate the way I did that. And so, um, and then I'm gonna multiply in the numerator. One times this is A squared minus AB plus B squared. And that's over that common denominator. Plus, and then 3AB over, and then it already had the common denominator. I don't want to multiply the denominator together uh, because I'm just going to verify, hey, the denominator is the same. And then I'm gonna drag it around is what I'm gonna do because now you just simply add the numerator together, right? So I'm gonna add the numerator together, it is add. And, uh, and so when I add the numerator together, a squared is not like terms with three ab, but negative, this is negative one ab, right? And those are like terms, negative one ab plus three ab is positive two ab. So this would, um, could be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. I wrote it purposely in that order, and the reason I purposely wrote it, write that denominator out. The reason I purposely wrote it in that order is because it's an order according to a. a squared, a, and then a to the zero, right? a to the second, a to the one, a to the zero. So it's an order according to A. And now that I've done that, I'm done, except for you need to simplify it. You need to reduce it. So you have to factor the numerator and you have to factor the denominator in order to reduce it. And the good news is, is the denominator is already factored. That's the reason I didn't multiply the denominator together. The reason I had to multiply the numerator together is because I had to combine like terms. That's something I did not do with the denominator. I just drug it along. And so, um, and so you really do need to multiply in the numerator but not in the denominator. And so what that's gonna make here, this is gonna be uh, a times a, right? a times a, we've actually factored exactly this piece before, and b times b, I remember back there in chapter five, no, was it chapter five? Yeah, it was chapter five. Go look and you'll find exactly this one. And remember the numbers here are one. And when I add those numbers, one and one, I get two. And when these multiply together, I'm gonna to get an AB. And when those multiply together, I'm gonna to get an AB. So this actually factors as A plus B 
times A plus B. You can FOIL it to see that I'm not lying to you. And um, then the A plus B would uh, cancel out. So this would reduce with that. And we get simply uh, making it work, making it fit in these little boxes, uh, writing on these things and showing all my work in my little box. I realize my boxes need to be bigger. So uh, there's always positives to everything. And so that's something that I've learned here. And so uh, because when you know you solve something out yourself and you skip a lot of steps, right? And so, uh, and so it seems to fit. Okay, so we did a lovely job on that one. And um, this won't reduce with this because this won't factor. And this is a binomial and that's a trinomial. And they have to be exactly the same, same size and same exact pieces. And, um, and so they're not even the same size. So even if they have some similar pieces, they're not the same size. Okay, so we're gonna um, work on this one. And um, we notice the denominators are not the same. In order to subtract, the denominators have to be the same. Um, it's problem 45, so maybe you can pause and give it a try yourself. But the first step is to factor those denominators. So that's gonna be my first step is to apply the F word, right? To this denominator and to that denominator. So that's what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do first. So uh, five is five times one, and that does make six. So this is four a over a plus five a plus one minus, and then four is uh, four times one. That'll make five. So this is minus three a times um, a plus four a plus 1. Now I can see that I want to build the common denominator and um, and so uh, the lowest common denominator has to have an a plus 5 because this one has an a plus 5 and, um, and so a plus 5. It has to have an a plus 1 and this one agrees yeah you have to have 1 a plus 1 so we'll put it here. That's what they already have in common. And then this one says you have to have an a plus 4. And I don't have an a plus 4, so I'll have it, 1 a plus 4. And this one says, remember, I already, I already agreed about having 1 a plus 1. There it is, a plus 1. And so there is our common denominator. And then now we want to figure out what, which each, what they're each missing. And we're going to put that on there. I'm going to scoot this over. A little bit. I um, forgetting to leave myself room. I leave myself room in class. I don't know why I remember when I'm in class, but am not remembering right now. A plus five times a plus one. Okay. So what is missing for this one is the. It has the a plus five. It has the a plus one. Is the a plus four. So I need to a plus four it. in the numerator and in the denominator. So I've essentially multiplied by one. A plus four divided by A plus four is one. But I've done that so the bottoms will be the same of these two fractions. So I don't want to cancel it, because if I cancel it, then I'm going to go away from my bottoms being the same. And this one had an A plus four, so this denominator needs to have an A plus four as well. And this denominator is missing the a plus 5, so I'm going to a plus 5 it, top and bottom, which is multiplying by 1, so that's why it's writing an equivalent fraction. And now the denominators are the same, and I just want to put the numerators together. So in order to put these together, in order to subtract that, right, because that's what I want to do, so in order to subtract this, you have to multiply this together with this, so the, and this together with this, so that I can distribute the negative and combine like terms. So this is going to be 4a squared plus 16a, right? And then over the common denominator, I'm going to write just parentheses. And can you just, in, in your mind, imagine a plus 5 in there, a plus 1 in there, and a plus 4 in there? minus uh, 3a squared plus 15a over, 
So I just left that negative in the center. And now I'm going to remind you, there are parentheses here. And when you subtract and here, you have to distribute that negative. And, um, and so this is going to be uh, 4a squared plus 16a. And when I distribute that negative, minus 3a squared. Remember, I was thinking this. There's an A there. Just like before when we did it, distributing that negative, right? And so this negative is going to go here, and this negative is going to go here, minus 15A, all over those three that are exactly the same. And it doesn't matter what order you put these in. A plus 5, A plus 1, a plus 4 order doesn't matter, but that's what I have in there. And so uh, I'm going to have here 4a squared minus 3a squared is 1a squared, so that's a squared. And um, 16a minus 15a is minus a over those three things. And I'm about ready for factor factor, which is... I know I've already said this joke is not, is not as good as pizza pizza, right? So, or maybe I said it was as good as pizza pizza, who knows with me. And, um, and so, do you guys see I made a boo-boo? Do you see the sign error I made? 16a take away 15a is minus a, but that should be plus 1a, right? So, whoops, whoops. And, um, and so now I'm ready to factor the top. Yeah, I normally have you guys to help me and not make any sign errors, and I normally don't make like 17 videos in a row. Okay, 17 was an exaggeration. Okay, so uh, a squared plus uh, a, when you factor that, is gonna you're going to pull out an a. So that's going to be a plus 1, greatest common factor. And you notice the a plus 1 is going to uh, cancel out. And then I'll be done with this problem. Hooray, hooray, hurrah, hurrah. And um, so it reduces and gives us a over a plus 5, a plus 4. I'm in the crack. a plus 5, a plus 4. Which won't cancel because that's a monomial and won't cancel with a binomial. Okay. That problem is done. This problem is definitely a grand finale problem and gonna take me over my limit of chopping off, so I'll do it in a part two. Maybe you could give it a try and then watch part two. Hello, okay, my friends, this is part two. I have just a little bit to go on um, 7.3, right? Um, so this one here, um, looks like that doesn't have a common denominator, right? It's asking us to subtract. The denominators aren't the same. It's going to have to factor those denominators. They're not easy, or easy enough for me to factor right there, so maybe I'll factor them right up here. And so let's see here. Not a common factor for all of them. 2x times x is only possibility. 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. I know the signs are both positive, though. Because this, since this is a positive, that means they're the same. And this says, yeah, yeah, they're both just like, just like me. So they're both positive. So let's see, we want to add up to 5. 6 is already bigger than 5, so we can't use the 1 and the 6. So it must be, if it's going to factor, that it's going to be somehow 2x and x, plus and a plus, and we're going to uh, put in the 2 and the 3. Um, I wrote that down wrong. Do you see that? This was a 3. I don't know where, where I, what I was thinking, but I, I picked up this denominator here and put a 6 because of that denominator there, I'm sure. And I was now working on it and thinking, this doesn't factor. Um, so let's see here. 1 and 3 is the only possibility, and I want to make 5. And uh, I don't want the 3 to multiply with the 2, because if it does, that'll make 6, and that'll be too big. So I'm going to put the 3 here and the 1 there, 
And, um, and so, and I can check it to make sure. So on the outer, I get 2x. On the inner, that's positive. On the inner, I get positive 3x. And when I add those together, I get 5x. So boom, boom, boom. So here I have 5x plus 3 divided by 2x plus 3 times x plus 1. And actually, if that reduced, it would be okay for me to reduce it, but it doesn't. So that's a binomial, 5x plus 3, and it's not the same as either one of those binomials. Now I'm going to factor the other piece here. So the other piece here, uh, 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. So 2x times x, 1 times 6, 2 times 3. Um, and I know that the signs are both positive for the same reason they were on the other one. And let me think, I'm trying to make 7 in the center. Um, and uh, so I'm thinking, gosh, if I could uh, make uh, 2 times 4, that would, 2 times 2 would make 4, and then that would leave me with a 3 there. So I'm kind of piecing it together. I was kind of thinking, well, the 6 is just too big to the 7, almost already there and then I would have the other stuff to multiply, the 2, right, and um, not, that's not going to work. So 2x and x, x and x, and I wanted this to multiply with the 2 to make 4x, and I wanted this to multiply with uh, right there, so that's positive 3x, and boom, boom, I made 7. So um, you do get better at it when you practice it. If you don't practice it, you're not going to get better at it. Um, and so uh, that's what it, it takes to get better at it, is to practice. And uh, so 3x minus 9. Now I'm working on getting a common denominator, now that I've got those denominators factored, and I'm thinking to myself, well, what is the common denominator? Well, uh, they have in common a 2x plus 3, so that's part of the common denominator, but no need to worry about it. Uh, and this one has an x plus 1, which this one does not, so the common denominator needs an x plus 1. And this one has an x plus 2, which this one does not, so it needs an x plus 2. So there's the common denominator, and I want to make both denominators look just like that. So this denominator right here is missing the x plus 2. So we're going to x plus 2 it, top and bottom. So right up here, multiply by x plus 2, and in the bottom, multiply by x plus 2. And in the next one, uh, it's missing the x plus 1. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x plus 1, because remember, that's the same as multiplying this fraction by 1, which leaves it unchanged. So now the denominators are the same. They have the same three pieces. The denominators do. Order doesn't matter. And all I have to do is I have to multiply this together and subtract it from that. And so I'm going to do the multiplying first. That's going to be FOIL. And so just multiplying this part together is going to be 5x squared, right, when I multiply here using FOIL, plus 10x plus 3x plus 6. And I'm going to go ahead and combine the like terms, and then I'll write it over the common denominator. So that's 5x squared plus 13x plus 6 over the common denominator. Those three binomials, imagine them there, 2x plus 3 x plus 1, x plus 2, minus, and um, we're going to have those three binomials here too. And so I'm going to multiply that together, I'm putting my finger over the minus because I have it right here, and I'm just going to foil that together. So that's going to be 3x squared, there times there, plus 3x, minus 9x, minus 9. And when I combine like terms, I have 3x squared, minus 6x, minus 9. And remember that parentheses are right here and right here. They're implied. And so I have to distribute that negative in order to subtract. In here, I still have just the 2x plus 3, the x plus 1, the x plus 2, but I'm ignoring it. So that's the reason I don't care if I really write it there. I am filling in the blank here, but I mean, as far as, it, it's just down there, and my focus right now is on doing that subtraction. And the first thing that you do to do that subtraction is you distribute the negative.
So this is going to be a negative times a positive is a negative 3x squared. A negative times a negative is a positive 6x. A negative times a negative is a positive 9, all divided by the common denominator, which is those three binomials, the 2x plus 3, the x plus 1, and the x plus 2 in any order. And now I'm on combined like terms. 5x squared take away 3x squared is 2x squared. 13x plus 6x is 18, 19x. And 6 plus 9 is 15. All over the common denominator. After you add those together or subtract them, since we distributed the negative, then we ended up combining like terms, which was adding. After you do that, then you have to factor factor. And so you factor the numerator and you send praises because the denominator is already factored. I don't have to do anything to it. So there I am now trying to factor 2x squared plus 19x plus 15. So uh, it's a binomial that doesn't have anything in common other than 1. So it's 2x times x. It could be 1 times 15 or it could be 3 times 5. And um, I want to make um, I want to make 19 uh, there in the center. Um, makes me want to go back with my fingers and make sure that 13 plus 6 is 19. So uh, let's think here how that, uh, how that could work. And I don't think it will, right? Um, if I use the 1 and 15, 2x and um, x here, um, positives, the 15 could go here, but then that's not going to be big enough to make 19 because you're going to get 15 times x is 15x plus 2x. That's 17x. And so, so that didn't work. And... Um, and so then we're on, well, what, it, so that didn't work, right? Uh, if I move the 1 here and the 15 there, that would make 30, and that's too big. So that didn't work. And then 2x and x and the 3 and the 5, plus and a plus. If I put the 3 here, that's 6. And if I put the 5 there, so here makes 6, putting the 5 there makes 5, and 5 and 6 is not 19, 5 and 6 is 11. So if I put the 3 here and the 5 there, then this is 10 and 3 is 13. So it doesn't factor, so this is the answer. So I tried to reduce it, but it doesn't always reduce. And um, so that's kind of the story on, uh, on that problem. And um, my friends, uh, I will uh, upload uh, the lab for you to do the daily incentive points. Uh, dip is what I call those when I'm abbreviating, but um, people, so many people were asking what does dip mean that I put daily incentive points on the next or daily incentive um, because that's what I usually call it, I guess, in class when I'm talking. And, um, and so I hope that you're working hard. I'm going to try to have some more office hours tomorrow, and um, that worked out well today. I thought I had about seven people come, so that's, that's pretty good. Some people were in and out, and a couple people stayed the whole time. It's wonderful. Okay, talk to you guys later. I hope that you're doing well. Bye-bye.